risk my life for answer. All right, people, in this video, we got the motor back here, got the transmission as well. We're going to put it all together. We're going to get it in the car and get it started. So let me give you an idea of the progress here. So we torqued 159 foot-pounds. We got that crank pulley bolt torqued. need someone to take a, a chain wrench. My Mercedes mechanic who lives right next to me, he put a chain around here. I'm never going to use this, so I don't care if it got a little scratched. And he uh, hooked that up, and uh, that was... Totally fine, 159 foot-pounds. On the back side, we got the flywheel torqued down. We got the clutch in. We got the clutch pressure plate on. These are my original, and they're totally fine. Um, so now, we're gonna put on the transmission. So obviously, uh, it'd be nice if I had my um, my shop crane, but let me show you what happened to it. So I think it was being an idiot and uh, working on this on a very uneven surface inside there. I um, messed up the caster wheel mount. I don't know if you can see this. It's all bent. And the wheel came out. You can see it's really bent right there. So the wheel came out, luckily, when the motor wasn't on it. And so I have to go get a whole new uh, caster wheel because um, I'm not going to try and lift this motor without one of the caster wheels on. I need two. So that's just another stupid thing I have to do, and I have to go get the oil. For the motor and then it's ready to go in the car oh, i'm so tired of buying stuff but hopefully this is the last thing i have to buy okay so this is the one i was able to get um it's a metal wheel it's a little smaller than the other one but it had to be metal because of the weight it's holding but the caster as far as this mount it's a little wide so i have to ground two of these holes down so that they're closer to the middle so i can actually bolt up all four bolts Okay, well, I know it's not perfect, but at least all four holes line up, so let's go try it out. Got it on there most of the way. I'm good enough. Don't worry, it's safe, guys. And uh, time to hook the, lift this motor up so I can put the transmission on. Oh, well, the transmission is very hard to get on. I forgot. It's actually easier when the motor was in the engine bay. So I'm going to set the motor down so that side is facing down. And then I will un... I will set it up so it's safe there and I'll get the transmission over there and I'll put on the shop crane and lower it and put shaft down onto this. I don't know what else to do. So my hope is to of course swing it like this and then lower it into position so I can actually see what I'm doing. I got the transmission on. That was hard. Just do one last check. Make sure that the throw up bearing is still around. I need light. Uh, you can't see it, but yeah. There's one, and there's two. Transmission's on now, and it's torqued down. And um, I've got the motor hooked up. I need to turn it around, obviously. And then we gotta put it in there. Oh, I almost have it in. It's quite a finagling process. But uh, I'm about ready to put the mounts on, and it looks cool. I got the transmission mount on, and so that end's gonna go in first. Then I'm gonna do the rear mount, which is almost completely perfectly lined up already, which is great news. And then I'll go over to the timing side. Okay, cool, finally, I got that all bolted up. I needed to actually use a jack to um, rotate the motor backward a little bit. Now, over here, we are working on the timing side, which is actually pretty close. No more engine hoist. It's all in. No more jack. Everything's in. Wow. That looks so cool in there. I can't believe how cool that looks. All right, it's the evening on the next day, and it's looking much better now. I've got the wiring harness hooked up. Um, just one issue I had is that uh, two wires that uh, hang off here, right there. Um, they go to one of the coolant sensors. I hope it's this one that's blocked off on the H23. Um, but the rats ate it, and it's now there. So I'm trying to make sure the two coolant sensors I have hooked up, this one to the one next to the O2 sensor, the four wire um, 
low voltage um, narrow band O2. And then what I did for the other one that's attached to here, I extended the wires and drove it back here to get to the thermostat housing, which is much farther back on the H22 manifold, which this has. I think on the CV7, it's over here. So I need to reach a little bit. So next, I need to hook up the axles. I need to um, fill it with fluids, hook every other coolant line up and fire it up. Uh, so when I was doing my axles, I realized that these uh, rebuilt drive shaft shopped axles that I got off of a user on CB7 tuner are the wrong ones. They are longer than the CB7s. These are totally longer and uh, the overall length is longer on both sides. Plus the driver's side shaft isn't going all the way. That makes me think these are prelude axles and you cannot use these. So I am unfortunately, I'm taking this apart to put these on. I'm gonna have to reuse the old ones here. Um, they're all right, they just had a bad shake uh, around 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, but otherwise they held up fine. So they're going in. Okay, got all the wiring hooked up. I got my intake in. I don't have obviously this in because that's not the point of tonight. The battery's in, starter's in, everything's in, all the wiring's in. I bled the clutch line, haven't had a chance to bleed the brakes yet. My wife's really tired. Um, I got the exhaust hooked up. So I'm gonna put the map in the car. Um, I'm gonna put the base map in the ECU to get the battery terminal hooked up. And then I'm gonna let the O2 sensor wideband calibrate. And the car's had electrical power since July 6, 2017. Okay. And there it is, 22.4, that means calibration. Now I turn it to two. check fuel pressure okay I just updated the changes to the ECU getting some codes though let's see if she turns over Actually turned on. Cooling fan already kicked on. Whoa. Wonder why that is. Okay, well, I'm happy. That's really good success. Obviously it's freaking loud. But holy cow. Wow. So I checked under the car. There was a small pool of what I hope it was water, but it was oil. Uh, I also have great tension in the timing belt still. So that's really good. Um, I just need to go check what 6 and 21 are for an OBD1 system. So I'm at the junkyard again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get, find an accord, get the proper water neck that actually has the sensor on it. I use the blocked off one that I have on the H22, swap that out and fix the sensors because apparently the one to the thermostat was the one the rats ate through. All right, I got the correct water neck on. The green and white live cable, it's kind of hard to see here, goes to the water neck and the CP7 harness. The green and yellow live cable goes to the head coolant temperature sensor. 
And then the one I actually broke, black and blue, the blue live wire goes to the thermostat. So I had to undo the loom quite a bit to make that and pull it out and make it reach. And that's where I had to solder it right there. We see the shrink wrap. So that's done. And I, in the car, hopefully this fixed this VTEC solenoid. I decided to ground somewhere independent of any other grounds. And the one I was sharing it with was actually the D2 brake switch for my burnout rev limiter, which I had from uh, my drag racing day. So hopefully that fixes that because it is pinned correctly in the ECU. All right, so I got from the dealer, I got the O-ring. Um, it is big, I just hope it's the right one. I did get it for a 98 SIV tech, so it should be the same block. Okay, so we're gonna put the seal on. We're gonna start her up, and if she doesn't leak, it'll be our first time out on the road. <laughs> so I got the new one in there. Here's the old one. There's a crack right there. No wonder it was leaking like it was. So it took about a minute to get down here.
first look at the car now that it's done. Nice. So let me just explain what's been happening over the last few days that I haven't been filming. Um, so many complications came up after that uh, road drive. First, the exhaust pipe didn't come on Tuesday. My alignment with Black Tracks was scheduled for Wednesday, and uh, it came on Wednesday morning. So I couldn't get to Black Tracks on Wednesday morning, so I had to go to the exhaust shop late. They didn't do such a good job. Um, the header hang too low. I was hoping they would see that and then try and shove up the lower pipes a little bit so that it wouldn't hang so low, but they didn't. They just welded a piece of pipe that kind of made the rest of the exhaust sit higher, but the flange for the header is really low and it's scraping. Um, also, uh, after that, uh, I didn't get a, I tried to reschedule the alignment. It couldn't happen. They couldn't, uh, they didn't get back to me. I tried to call a couple times. Unfortunately, I couldn't hear from them. So I tried to get an alignment a couple other places. It never worked out. Tried to go back to the exhaust to get it fixed. It didn't work out. And um, my VTEC solenoid is also just deciding it's got some wiring issue and it doesn't like the signal it's getting from the ECU. So I'm trying to figure that out right now because I have to at least have VTEC if I'm going to go to the race, even on the base map. Um, so that's postponing the tune, which was supposed to happen on Thursday. Now it's Saturday. Um, I've got a, and I've got a vacuum leak. I've got to figure out what that is. I hope it's not the IACV, but it very well could be. It was last time. I had to replace the whole unit. <sighs> and then, on top of all that, my alternator decided um, it was going to quit on the diodes, apparently, and went got tested. The diodes are bad. And um, it's drained my battery. Right now I'm charging the battery. Um, it seems to be okay. It had 76%, 12.5 volts when I hooked it up, so that's okay. But uh, the alternator was done, and um, so I've got a new Denso Reman in there, which is very nice. So hopefully that'll be good. It's only 150 bucks. You can get those with tax for 150 bucks now. So hopefully I can still go. Um, it's just. 280 bucks down the drain if I don't get this working to the point where I can race it. I feel okay about the alignment as it is, but I'd always like a second opinion on making sure everything was tightened after I took the rack out. would hate for the steering to come apart while I'm on the track. But uh, that's where it's at right now. So.